Hey guys, what's up? This is Panther Dragon, aka Luigi Dragon, and today we're going over the patch 4.10 notes. And obviously, there have been some reworks, but we won't go in depth on them since we haven't actually seen what those changes are yet. But in this patch, it seems like they really want to buff AD carries on their itemizations, and so I'll be talking about them the most. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so first up is Nidalee. Um, so the way I'm looking at it is obviously all her damage got nerfed. She can use Cuckoo Form at level one, and some cooldowns in her Cuckoo Form are been toned up a bit so they aren't as spammable as before everything all her damage uh, got lowered but there's this new thing called the hunted passive and and which gives your cougar form more damage and the way to proc that is you have to hit someone with your spell in human form what I'm looking at this is there's gonna be no more poke but what you're gonna probably see more is an AP Jace or an AP bruiser bruiser Nidalee and I don't know if you'll see me seeing Triforce because um, or like Frostborn um, because her Q is now magic damage so she doesn't have any physical damage um, so I don't know if people run Iron Pen or something but anyways yeah I can't really say anything for these changes and how it will affect her or like if she's viable or not because we have to see it live to see if it's actually good or not um, I think she'll be a better top laner now, now than mid laner of course but yeah there's no more poke, poke nidalee there's no more those fucking there's no more those like one shot spears I think that's all gone, and yeah, her poke is gone. Uh, I think so. We'll see. We'll see later. The next up is Skarner. So he's getting a new passive, removing the old passive, which you know auto attacked and gave that cooldown reduction. But they're applying that to the Q only. And what they're making up, of course, is the cooldown reduction. And all his skills are being reduced a bit lower, and you know that's that kind of helps. And they're adding a bunch of new things to his kit. So now he can actually stun just like Brom's passive. And what I'm looking at is it, it's only triggered by getting three stacks, which you earn by doing your abilities that do damage. So the combo that stuns someone is Q E Q, and yeah, then you can stun with the, with an auto attack. Um, all his damage is actually getting nerfed. His Q is no more doesn't doesn't do all that much damage. Um, doesn't have that uh, yeah doesn't have that base AD, but um, it's not that much honestly. You just rely on the base damage. He is a tank, so. Again, that's yeah, that's cool. And what else? Oh yeah, these are all added. So what you see, like the slow is still here. Um, the, the attack speed bonus is still here, and you're just getting an added bonus movement speed. And I think that's pretty cool. Everything looks added. So this is obviously a buff, and we're gonna have to see later if he's good or not in live live gameplay. And now Galio gets magic resistance per level, but honestly, he's probably still shit. So I wouldn't worth be looking into him. And Gragas gets the buff. Uh, this is really situational where he, ever, whenever he gets interrupted, this is nothing. Um, he doesn't get interrupted that much. Karthus, I don't know, just a bunch of bug fixes, so this is really nothing. And I guess he gets some swag. As seen right here. So next up is LeBlanc. She can no more silence. This is really impactful. Um, she already has a low win rate. Obviously, she's really good in like competitive play or something in like high A low. Um, but this is what's going to happen and what I see. Let's say she goes in for a combo against hmm, Ari. She goes in for against combo against Ari. She does all her crap, and what's going to happen is Ari can actually now react and kill her since she's not silenced anymore. I mean, she can be rooted, but like, um, if LeBlanc goes all in, she there is a higher chance of her dying, and that's what I think is going to happen. Also, when you say you're picking off someone, um, let's say Lucian, or yeah, okay, the re the uh, the root. The ethereal chains does not prevent them from flashing out. If you don't get the silence, the silence is actually the silence is what made them not being able to flash out. So if you go in for a kill, they can just use their escape now and be out of your route. And honestly, I think LeBlanc is gonna be like shit tier right now. Um, just because the silence is removed. And now Lucian. Lucian just got a damage nerf, honestly. That W did a lot of damage, but I don't think this will change a lot. Theon received a bug fix, doesn't matter though. Prove Sivir's mid game, late game, um, as she does learn, run Oom, and like having more mana during team fights and whatnot, and prolonged sieging attempts uh, is pretty useful. So they're just trying to improve her late game, mid game, so that she can spam more spells. So you might see her more often than usual next patch. Alright, so next up is Tristana, and it looks like Ryze is trying to improve every other AD carry by improving them some way. As they do apparently right now, it says they have plans for future AD carries and how to buff them. 
and as you can see rocket jump mana is now 60 and checks over walls okay cool I don't know how impactful that is but people who play just Santa probably knows what what is wrong or what they're fixing and this is a pretty cool change honestly the buster shot now scales with level um, so so you'll have like a 70, 50, 750 range ulti and push people away so I think that that's gonna be pretty cool for her late game and obviously improves her late game right, so next up uh, is twitch so it looks like they're nerfing them so hard um, not that hard he still has that utility from his ultimate the spray and pray but as you can see let three less damage okay sweet um, I have 15 AD from runes but still this kinda makes me mad and then right here six damage uh, from 8 damage late game so uh, what happens is twitch can do 288 damage with true damage with 6, six stacks late game so um, as it does go over 6 seconds so if we do this if we do 6 times 6 and then times it by 6 this is how much damage it would be late game so he's efficiently doing 670 tr true damage less um, if he gets a full 6 seconds but obviously it's going to be over extent since he does keep procking it when he does apply another stack and this Q ambush is probably needed uh, the 1.5 seconds honestly I don't think that was needed but they did that anyways so without take without taking damage you have a longer time to stealth but this one is the probably the big one and probably the most annoying one when trying to gank a twitch if you aren't Lee Sin or someone else basically if you could if you went to twitch's lane and you tried to gank him you always have to bring a vision ward or else you couldn't kill him because he would always just get away with his stealth but right now they prolong that from 3 seconds to 6 seconds to 6 seconds so finally you can play someone other than Lee Sin and someone Urs and you don't always have to bring a pink ward now you can just straight up kill him and I think this is really much needed especially for junglers who want to camp him honestly with all these AD carries getting nerfed I think Lee Sin is going to be number one for the longest time, I think he's like, especially in competitive play and higher elo, he will always be first picked. Like no one is in match. Um, definitely not Tristana right now. Definitely not. Uh, I think there's another AD carry. Okay, never mind. It's definitely not Tristana. It's definitely not Silver. It's going to be Lucian who's number one. And that's my final thought. Of course, I think Javen's going to be there too. So next up is lifesteal items or the new AD carry items. Starting with Essence Reaver, I want to explain who I think it's going to be used on and it's going to be Ezreal and Jace. Um, so you do get 2 to 8% of that damage dealt by basic attacks and you guys can see this obviously. You do get cooldown reductions and lifesteal so again, only on Jace and Ezreal will you probably see this item. Anyone like Kogma or Corky probably not. They aren't mana intensive. I mean, Kogma can be if you spam his R a lot, but he works fine as he does go to Blader, Rune King, slash Triforce route or something like that. And so, yeah, I think Ezreal does now doesn't need to build mana immune and go that like Frost for the blue build, and this is going to make up for that. And same with Jace too. Um, he can sustain off this entirely. He doesn't have to go Chalice, which I've seen people go on him before, and then build that into Mikhail's and he doesn't have to go mana immune anywhere and this is your new item to go and maybe you won't see mana immune ever again oh I forgot also Urgot Urgot could use this item too and anyone who else who use mana immune will probably use this right, so next up I want to be talking about the Blader Rune King now as you can see you can read the changes right here but what does this mean to me it means that Zed is getting an indirect nerf um, just because he used active a lot for his burst combo like the death mark and now that's gone and now he's going to rely on more auto attacks to get that off uh, what does this mean for Kogma and Vayne and people who use Blade Rune King it's obviously a, ner a buff sorry a buff because it went from 5% to 8% which is a lot to be honest so the more auto attacks you do the more damage you do and someone like Master Yi, I think it's a buff for him since he is an auto attacker but someone like Jax and Trindamir, um, it's ever so slightly a nerf just because uh, they are auto attackers, but um, I feel like Trindamir is crit more, so he does a lot of damage and doesn't auto attack that much to kill somebody, while Jax has a lot of spells and uses the active more uh, for burst damage too. Right, next up is Bloodthirster. So they removed the passive and added a new passive. So now you can overheal. This means you get a shield uh, when you lifesteal for 50 to 450 damage. So let's say you have 2000 health. Um, if you lifesteal 450 health, 
then you get a shield that grants 450 health. Um, and the damage and life steal went up, the gold went up, so this is actually obviously buffing AD carries since the only people who use Bloodthirster are AD carries and they're the ones who auto attack and life steal the most and people who use Bloodthirster like uh, Kha'Zix, um, Talon, like some, some people use this to buff their AD ratios. Oh, even Pantheon, it's kind of useless for them um, since they do not use life steal that much. Uh, especially Pantheon. If you think of Pantheon using life steal, uh, it's probably not going to happen. He does have high AD ratios. That's the only reason he ever got this item. But now I don't think he'll be ever getting this item. And so this is obviously the buff AD carries and no one else. Next up, I want to be talking about the Mercurial Scimitar. As you can see, the BF Swords um, items, they did get buff. But let's go over this one. First of all, Zed again nerfed. People are going to buy this more often against Zed. Now Deathmark won't proc anymore or something. So again, Zed indirectly nerfed. But anyways, let's let's see. So you get 80 damage and you get more movement speed. Um, the movement speed is like, holy crap. That's like a 3 second ghost for 60% movement speed you can kite someone really well and you might see this replacing banshee's fill for 80 carries obviously and you're gonna see probably more people use this um, and do that clutch cleanse thing like against TF TF will stun you oh cleanse and then you're like a god or something and yeah this might be a scary item to look out for so who becomes useless Lissandra um, you know all these all these lo all these people who rely on their ultimates to lock you up, those have kind of become more useless against AD carries. All right, so next up is attack speed items. As you can see, they are just buffing the hell out of attack speed items, especially so they're trying to emphasize more AD carries. And Yomu is now at last for six seconds and instead of four seconds. So people like Draven, who I've seen it before, and Twitch, they actually kind of got a buff on this. Um, I'm not sure who else. I think. Uh, Lucian can use it since he does benefit off cooldown reduction plus armor penetration, but I'm not sure. Um, it's just those people who are really scary used it. Um, oh, Quinn! Quinn! She actually uses it too when she goes into bird farming all in someone. Um, oh wait, never mind, that's melee, but still, you guys know what I mean. And so, who else would it be good on? I guess Vayne, in a, in a sense. You might see it more in Vayne, but probably not. And, yeah. I'm not sure who else would use it too. And next up is the Randuin's nerf slash Warden's Veil nerf. So attack speed reduction is now 10% and movement speed is no longer here. That means people hitting that uh, Eve with Randuin's won't be getting away or will be getting away now. Um, honestly, did this really have to happen? I mean, I, as me, you guys know I'm a jungler. Why did this have to happen? I can't, I can't go on 80 carries anymore. Like this, <laughs> this sucks. This sucks for me. But if you're an 80 carry, this is good for you. Next, I want to be going over the support items. The first one being this new item called the Ardent Sensor. Um, your heals and shields do grant your units 25% more attack speed for six seconds. Um, if you look at the stats here, these aren't really tank stats, and it looks like it's more oriented towards people who are AP, more kind of backline support peelers like Janna and Nami. And so, like, what I'm thinking is this would be really OP on Thresh if it gave any resist or hit point because he does have an AoE shield, and but it doesn't really give any, um, it doesn't really give any tanky stats for him. And so here's a list I've actually came up of who it works on and who it doesn't work on. Right here is a list that doesn't work on since they don't have any heals or shields but right here is a list of people who it works on and honestly uh, the best people I think it'll work on and let's say our team is a bunch of auto attackers I'd say the best one is Janna, uh, Lux I guess um, who else? Not, no, not Nami, Soraka and Thresh it's just Soraka, Janna and Thresh because they all have AoE heals and Everyone else is single target, except Karma, she can use her Mantra E to buff everyone. And honestly, this item is probably going to be probably going to be used a lot. It looks it looks promising, and I'd like to see it. I'd like to see people start using it. Now next up, I'm going to be talking about the Mikhail's. So the gold increased, um, and the mana regen increased, and you get cooldown reduction. So what does this mean? You might see this less because the gold is so high, but... Uh, Honestly, the buffs for it, the mana regen and the cooldown reduction were not worth how much gold it is worth now. So that's why I don't think you'll be seeing it enough. 
Um, the mana regen per second is a lot, but when the hell have you ever ran Oom um when you had this item on someone like Janna or any one of those? You never ran Oom. Um. Maybe for someone like Sona, but I don't see it like being as used as it was before, and it's probably going to be only situational if you need more heals. And next up, we do have Athene's Grail. It looks like the magic is getting nerfed, and 10 mana is gone. But assist and ooh kill 15% from 12%. Oh, that's so big. Um, honestly, uh, this doesn't seem that good. And people will probably be more looking towards Morello's Morellicon since the AP ratio did get buffed, along with Mana Regen. But we'll have to see because honestly, I think this indirectly nerfs Ziggs and all those type of champs who are really poke heavy. Next up is, I want to be talking about the summoner spells, teleport got nerfed, so uh, teleporting to a tower is 240 seconds, while teleporting to a minion is 240, or, sorry, 300 seconds, so you're only a minute off now, instead of a minute and 40 seconds, and so, yeah, uh, teleport got a, kinda got a nerf, but honestly, top lane is really stale right now, um, both but top laners come back if one of them gets uh, camped and like or killed and one of them gets a lead the other the other person who died just comes back with with the teleport and can farm back up and there's really no snowball involved that much all right so heal obviously got a nerf um i think this is maybe going to make up for the Merc Merc mercurial's scimitar but from two seconds and one second uh i don't think it's that much but maybe we'll see honestly i don't think it i think it's still optimal summary to take on an 80 carry. Alright, last but not least is the dragon. So they're increasing the base gold on it and decreasing the gold per level. I know what Riot's trying to do with this is they want to emphasize it and like uh, make sure that dragon is worth it to get early game because right now getting towers is better than getting a dragon at say like level 4 or 5 and what they're trying to emphasize again also is they want the bot lane to stay bot lane instead of doing this um, shitty lane swaps you see in the LCS and makes the game really boring to watch. You want to see obviously those 2v2s and 1v1s and see who's the better matchup, of course. So, um, if the lane that goes top lane doesn't lane swap, they're at a disadvantage because the, per the p two people who stayed bot lane uh, now have control over the dragon since they can just format it with their jungler and the mid laner, and then you know you would just get that. Yeah, so that's what I see Riot is trying to do with this buff. And that's the rundown of these changes, I hope you guys enjoyed it, obviously double in length as my last video, I honestly didn't expect this to be like 18 minutes, I wish it was like 10 minutes, but I mean there was a lot of changes in these patches, and hopefully when I do this again I don't want to do a 17 minute video, next time hopefully it's like 8 minutes. But hopefully you guys learned some things and got my insight of what I think is going to happen, and to conclude this video, if you're an 80 carry, be fucking happy. Because honestly, it looks like AD carry is going to be the most dominant role of solo queue and competitive play. And it's not like they are already. Like, look at the top five challengers. They're all AD carries. And so right now, I think AD carries is like the main role to carry yourself out of whatever. Remember, this is all just theory crafting, so don't take my full word on it. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.